up to the stage and we'll be a Doing it, 
And I gotta say, it kind of gets better every time. This is weird and rare. Um, Bob re-edits it every time. He keeps re it. <laughs> so there's a version of the film in which, I'll just say, in which the ending was a lot more dramatic. And that was what was in the script originally. And I bristled when I read it. And I called Bob and I said, I don't know, man, that's a hell of a doozy of an ending. How are you going to make that work? And he didn't know. <laughs> and he, he said, I wrote it from my unconscious. And I said, you mean your subconscious? <laughs> and he, said, he said, my unconscious. And I thought, that's not a thing. Uh, so I was concerned about the ending. And we, we stopped the ending as it was written and it involved a very long melodramatic speech that I give about the nature of life and death. And there was no Folgers can at the end thing, you know, smashing to the Folgers can. And, um, so when I saw that version, I said, oh boy. Uh, you know, I, I, I called him and I said, well, what do you think? And he said, it doesn't work. And I said, no, it doesn't. And you know, I didn't want to do the I told you so thing, but it was pretty hard <laughs> that it wouldn't. And then uh, we kind of, Bob and I kind of tossed around some ideas and came up with the more sort of blunt comedy version of this ending as, as best we could. And I think it works now. Yes. It works great. What a yeah, the ending definitely uh, works. I know. We have very strange yeah. lines to end up. I, I can't imagine it being more dramatic than it over here. That's pretty dramatic the way it was. Well, my character like gives a whole speech about the nature of life and death and about clouds and shit. And I was like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> what the <laughs> movies has this become? You know, I, you know, Bob is the only filmmaker who can get away with a major tonal shift. But this was even gilding the lily for him. It was a major tonal shift. So. Um, I'm glad that it's what it is now. And I think Bob is really proud of it, which is great. So, so Johnson, I want to ask, like, when you all got together, uh, did you, because you only had a 15 day shoot, which is like insanely short, even by the movie standards, did you have time to, to rehearse or, or did you just jump right in? Um, that's a good question. I, I did not rehearse. No. <laughs> 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 Uh, but there was such a camaraderie uh, between the cast, and we, you know, we all hung out. And um, Bob, you know, we did a table read actually in LA. Oh yeah. Long before. Yeah. So 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 in terms of like doing a table read, you know, you're yeah. you're you're reading through, and a lot of times, well, just from from what I've experienced with other conversations, especially in the indie world, scripts evolve, characters evolve. Uh, relationships evolved, uh, like just happy accidents during the table, we almost put that in. Did that happen at all? Or was like Bob's script, like, no, this is it? That's, that's still changed. No, it, it absolutely evolved and changed. The cast changed quite a bit. I'm not joking. <laughs> um, it, but it was a really early table read, and different people read it hard. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. What? You say it. Yeah. It was at uh, Joel McHale's house, and he was yeah. kind of uh, yeah. at that point. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, it was a different movie. He's a terrific actor. He's so funny. He's absolutely great. He's a great actor. Yeah. I can't imagine anyone else in the role. That's what we you know the actor by first. So, yeah. Very much.
Your man's a liar, and I'm a bitcher. <laughs> He 
he could, you see it on his face. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to make you angry. And, uh, and, and, but it created an urgency that I had not been in the performance because um, I just wanted it to be done. <laughs> I just wanted, you know, by week, by end of week one, I thought, I just wanted to get, go back home. So, <laughs> the quickest route to doing that was to get everything right. right. And now you don't want to shine 15 days, you just like rush through it. Yeah. Oh, madness. Um, but uh, I love Bob very much. <laughs> no, I do. He's an incredible writer. He really is an incredible writer. And, uh, you know, he's what an intrepid person. All of his movies are made ultra low budget. You know, he could have given up a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> he really, I mean, and, and yet he soldiers on and convinces people to give him money. And, uh, and, and I honestly, I admire the shit out of him. <laughs> And Bob and I have a lot in common, it turns out. Mainly, the main thing we have in common is we both live in a perpetual state of embarrassment. <laughs> and uh, it, it crushes us. And I knew that's what this film was about. Because this, in a lot of ways, is his most autobiographical film. Um, this is based on a true story. Which is bullshit. <laughs> it's not based on a true story. <laughs> That's him kind of playing with the trope of based on the truth, but that's not actually based on the truth. Um, but I, I'll speak for Bob and say he wrote it during the pandemic when he started to have feelings about death. And, uh, and so that's what inspired this sort of idea. What if a guy, you know, finds out he's going to die? And what I love about what we were simpatico on in the interpretation of that was I read it without him telling me what he wanted. And I said, I think I should play it like he's super relieved to be dying. You know, rather than playing the warrior neurosis or the urgency, this was a guy who was very successful at one point, never quite lived up to that success again, was clearly an egomaniac at some point, a drunk asshole to his friends. Because throughout the movie, his mother, his best friend, all the people in his life tell him, that they don't like him. He's left, and so the best of his life is well behind him, and he's convinced that there's nothing better to come. So when he finds out he's going to die, there's some relief, like thank you know goodness this is over. And before I go, I'd like to try and get laid and, and teach my favorite book. Um, it's not more complicated than that. <laughs> and I kind of love that, and he totally agreed. That's what he wanted. So. We didn't disagree on that, at least. So, Mark, I, I gotta get your take on working with Bob. Is it was it Joe with Davis? <laughs> you asked the right guy. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, it's accurate. I would answer a lot of it, but I don't have the same <laughs> relationship with Bob Peters. It's not very different than Trudy Davis. But I, I witnessed him act this way with the leads of his movies before. I, uh, I, th I think he just struggles with the stress of moving. And I think he unfortunately takes it out on the person who he sees the most. <laughs> <laughs> happening and 
Um, I, I did with Bob's script, I really tried to memorize every single punctuation <laughs> mark, you know, in every word. And I found that, um, yeah, working with David and working with Martin, it, they were so giving and being like live wires, so to speak, sure. that I could just be present and react to what was actually happening. And I, I thought it was so fun to play ball, so to speak, that. And from take to take, I felt like we were really um, <laughs> dancing <laughs> together in the same piece. So. Yeah, I'm uh, just getting this impression. Uh, I don't know, uh, but certainly. Don't know, Especially, it's 
more interesting to get into character as Val Carter. How did you get out of it? But we wrapped the team very intense in You know, to be honest with you, uh, the challenge, the biggest challenge of this for me was Bob said, I want you. And I, I always sort of do the sneaky thing, which is find an affectation or an imitation or a character choice that separates me from who I play, like a character actor. And uh, he said, I want you. And that kind of made it harder and easier at the same time. It made it more, uh, in, in, it made it more of an insecure experience because I wasn't sure if what I was doing was good, and Bob didn't help by torturing me and telling me I sucked the whole time. But um, I didn't tell me I sucked, but he was. It was very hard to gain his his uh, uh, approval. Um, you know, I I I I I'll be honest. I'm not a big believer in like. The character stayed with me. Although I think that happens sometimes, and it has happened to me since. But uh, not on this one. I was the hell out of there. I just to, <laughs> you know. Plus, I think Bob creates an environment in a weird way of like, let's not all, let's none of us take ourselves too seriously. I don't think Bob tolerates. Um, dramatic behavior from his actors. So if I was to come to set and say, this is killing me, and I need to find my space, can I have some quiet? Uh, he would hate me warning me at a red thing. So uh, that wasn't necessarily a, a thing I worried about. I was I was done when I was done. Can, can I say this? Uh, I, I think the most important thing you said to me was exactly how I feel. It's like the hardest character I've had to do was me, just doing me, because there's nothing to hide behind. There's it's just straight truth. And as a character actor, it's like, what? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that. <clears throat> uh, I, I would love to know how you guys feel about that, of just playing themselves for a character. You know, making making this film, uh, yeah. Olivia, like, I mean, it sounds like it was a very interesting shoot, especially for you. But how proud are you of this movie? Oh, I'm so proud of this movie. I think, at first of all, David, you're so good. Yeah, oh, it's all that's good. Thank you. Thank you.
amazing.